This is going to be a multi-part series. I'm going to teach you ohms, AC volts, and DC volts. By the end of this series, you'll be an expert on these little $15 cheapo multimeters. Now we're going to learn about like the most important thing, well, one of the most important things when you're diagnosing any wiring issue. You want to know if a wire is broken inside the loom. If you have a big loom like this, it's going to be nearly impossible to figure out like, is this green wire broken going through here? Nearly impossible. So we have something called an ohm test. Let me show you how to set that up on your multimeter. See this like little upside down horseshoe? We want to go to the lowest setting. In this scenario, it's 200. It's got a little eye on there. It's either that or it's going to be OL, open loop. Bottom line is there's no numbers displayed on there. Okay, so here's a quick and easy test you can do. If you take the negative and the positive of the multimeter, well, it's in ohms, to make sure it works, you just touch the two. If you look over there, there's a resistance reading. That's telling us that there's a connection between these two wires. Now I pull it apart, it goes back to nothing. Do that first just to make sure it works. Say I wanted to check these two wires like this. So this, or this one wire on both ends. This is how you're actually supposed to test it. So I got, I'm gonna touch one there and one there. So we're touching each end of the wire. If you notice, we have a resistance reading. That's perfect, okay? So the clips are holding this in place. You notice we have a resistance reading like that. You want to make damn sure, like I'm using these clips, but if you had an expensive high-end multimeter and you were holding these wires in place, you can't do that because it's going to measure the resistance between me. So if, I, if, I'm, holding, if I'm holding the wire like this or like going like this, you can't do that. There's resistance, but say if, there was, say if it was cut down the middle, there would still be a resistance reading because it's measuring me like I'm a wire. In this scenario, you can't do that because it's a low grade. But let me attach this really quick and show you what it looks like when you have a broken wire. So the wire is attached, and if you notice the multimeter there, we've got a resistance reading. Now I'm just going to clip the wire. No resistance reading. So pretend we had this big loom, you'd never know that that was broken in there. Of course I can visually see it on this, but that's how you're going to do it. We'll just do a quick test on, on a big loom to see if there's a broken wire. Say if we had this orange wire, with us a, which is a signal wire, it doesn't matter if you're using red or black, it doesn't matter uh, on which side. So I'm just going to kind of stab this in here. I might even just need to hold it. So I'm going to hold this in there so it's touching. Remember, our fingers aren't touching it. There's a plastic between here, so that's okay. Now I'll go to the very other end of this wiring loom over on this side, and there's an orange wire, because that's a front blinker. This is a rear blinker, so put it in there. Okay, look at the multimeter. That wire is good. We know that it goes from the front of the bike back to the back of the bike. If you, if you didn't have this multimeter, you're, the only way you're going to know is by taking the whole loom apart. So very important to know how to do an ohm test. There's more you can do with an ohm test than just that. There's resistance readings for measuring ignition coils, any electrical components. They'll all have a, uh, a spec within the service manual. So you can use this to look up resistance readings in your manual. Say if you think your ignition coil is bad, you know, you'll test this on this wire, this on this wire, and then it'll come up with a specific number within the range, and then you'll know if it's good or not. That's getting pretty technical. I just wanted to make this video the simple stuff that you can do. All right, let's move on to AC volts.